Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. Our gathering chant this morning is number 474 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Lord, you search me and you know me, 474. Our presider is Father Cecil Critch. Please stand. Search me and you know me when I rest or when I rise. All my thoughts you clearly follow. Keep my deeds before your eyes. All my journeys you have measured long before. too wonderful for me. In all worlds I find your presence, from your sight I cannot flee. If I fly above the heavens, Lord, I find you near to me. If I seek the nether shadows, in your presence I will be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today we celebrate the feast of the great Saint Dominic. Uh, born in Spain in 1172. And uh, he became a priest and he was um, a great fighter against the Albigensian heresy, which said that basically all matter, including human beings, are evil. Therefore, Christ could not be born a human. And so he kind of refuted the humanity of Jesus, that he could only be divine. So he, he and his or he established an order of priests called the Dominican Order, which were very highly educated and fought against these heresies. They were great in apologetics for the faith. So he himself uh, walked from city to city, preaching and inviting vocations to his order, which, uh, which flourishes even to this day. So we certainly ask his intercession today. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. Give us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May St. Dominic come to the help of your church by his merits and teaching, O Lord. And may he who was an outstanding preacher of your truth be a devoted intercessor on our behalf. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. While they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had indeed married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more or so anyone else on the face of the earth. Suddenly, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. And he said to them, Hear my words. When there are prophets among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted with all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly, not in riddles, and he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. When the cloud went away from over the tent, Miriam had become leprous, as white as snow, and Aaron turned towards Miriam and saw that she was leprous. Then Aaron had said to Moses, O oh my Lord, do not punish us for a sin that we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like one stillborn, whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of its mother's womb. And Moses cried to the Lord, O oh God, please heal her. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy. And my 
From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. Then Jesus called a crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? And Jesus answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, they will fall into the pit. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel today warns us against being hypocritical, being an outward show of honoring God while the heart harbors evil desires and intentions. The Pharisees learned from Moses to follow the law, the letter of the law, to please God and thus be faithful to the covenant. We do the same when we follow the Ten Commandments or the teachings of our church. However, Jesus purified the law and taught us to fulfill it, not out of duty but with, or with self-righteousness like the Pharisees. You know, Jesus taught and taught us to fulfill it fulfill the law. He, he, he made the law more pure. The Pharisees did not practice what they preached, and Jesus criticized them for their hypocrisy. Often what comes out of our, and, and one of the things he talked about is about food and defilement, and often what comes out of our mouths are hurtful words that are upon our loved ones and or people that we, you know, we hurt them. They don't know, and words don't hurt not only people that we say it to, but also hurt us too. This reality is more in common in our lives than we can imagine. So Jesus was telling the Pharisees who were complaining about the fact that the disciples were eating food and different food that they're supposed to be, you know, probably not kosher. So this reality is more common in our lives than we can imagine. With the tongue we praise the Lord our God and with it we also curse other people who have not, who also have been made in the image and likeness of God. So out of the same mouth sometimes comes praise and cursing. Jesus tells us that that is not to be, but God forgives us and God heals us if we admit our faults and sinfulness and seek to be reconciled with him. We only speak to the Lord and ask him to forgive us of our wrongdoings and our failure to do the good we ought so that we may love and serve him wholeheartedly. So Jesus is saying that the fifth commandment only says do not kill, but do not kill the spirit of a person. So it's easy to say, okay, we don't kill somebody, we don't murder somebody, that's obviously very, but we don't get angry with them, we don't uh, call them names, we don't say bad things like that to people. There's a beautiful kind of like, I think, uh, a, a allegory to this, and when oysters in the sea, we know about oysters, when they open their shelves and something like a grain of sand enters into an oyster, the oyster produces a kind of a slime which surrounds that foreign grain of sand to protect itself from it. So it could be a little grain of sand. But then it becomes encrusted with calcium and forms a pearl. Interesting. Just as an oyster produces that covering material, an authentic Christian produces virtues that protect us from sinning. We cover ourselves with the grace of God and are transformed into something beautiful. As a fruit of the Holy Spirit, we grow in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, what St. Paul calls the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So may we always strive in our life to live authentic Christian lives, not hypocritic, hypocritical Christian lives, to practice what we preach. Our prayers of intercession today. 
for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Peter, and all those who lead or guide our church in these trying times, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the success of the Synod of Bishops in Rome in October, for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. For peace in our world, to Sudan, Niger, also in Ukraine, for peace, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick recommended to our prayers. We continue to pray for David Taylor, who's in hospital here in St. John's. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all, this, all those who have died, for the recently deceased Don Halloran, Frank O'Leary, Carol Harris. We also pray for Kevin Dormady, one of our parishioners who died yesterday, for who was a great leader among our parish and Knights of Columbus and our archdiocese. So we pray also for Kevin today. We pray to the Lord for our own intentions today in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Attend mercifully to the prayers we offer you, O Lord, by the intercession of St. Dominic, and through the great power of this sacrifice, strengthened by the protection of your grace, those who champion the faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as, as on the festival of St. Dominic you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O in the heart.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, St. Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share the peace of Christ now with one another. Oh. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall, shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that people from the side sections come to receive Holy Communion first, and we encourage you to sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. If you are unable to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Communion hymn is number 6.4 in the celebrated song, Let Us Be Bread, 6.4.
Let us pray. May your church, O Lord, receive with wholehearted reverence the power of this heavenly sacrament by which we have nourished on the commemoration of St. Dominic. And may your church, having flourished by means of his preaching, be helped through his intercession through Christ our Lord. Thank you for your presence here today and thank Dominic Green for, on his feast day, for playing, uh, playing the organ today for us and Barr for singing and Shirley for uh, um, sacristy work today. So thank all of you for your presence and your ministry. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. Our missioning hymn is number 517 in the CBW, Lord Jesus, We Must Know You, 517. Lord Jesus, we must know you if we would make you known. For how can we proclaim you but by your grace? Of